Welcome to Daily Living with Father Chapin, where we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Yes, my friend, that is what we do. Sometimes the Bible can be a bit confusing, so we bust it down like a fraction. We're asking questions. Questions like, what do these Gospels have to do with me? That's what I want to know. How can I take these Gospels and apply them into my daily living so that I can become a reflection of God's love? I want to be light in this present darkness. I want to be a tool in the hand of God making present His kingdom. Not someday, but today and every day. And that's what this show is all about. So glad you could join us today. Oh, we got a good one. But before we get into it, it is time for Viewer Mail. Our letter today coming from Kirsten. She's somewhere in Florida. And she writes, Dear Father Chape, and I just wanted you to know that I understand that sometimes the encourager needs encouraging himself. And when these times come that maybe you hit a low moment, as we all do, please know that you are being uplifted in prayer. I hope you keep your energy level up over these next couple of months and you continue to bless so many people with your messages and help us grow in Christ. Have a wonderful season and remember that you are prayed for and thought of often thought of thought of often that is kirsten somewhere in florida what what kirsten would not have known when she wrote this she's my angel is that i have just been diagnosed with second stage throat cancer so i'm going to be having to leave the air for a little while i'm going down to houston md anderson they got the best of the best and they're going to try to take care of this so in a couple of weeks, we're going to have to go back to three years ago, which would be kind of funny because my eyebrow hadn't been fixed yet. But I'm coming back, so you just wait on me. I will be back. But in the meantime, let us quiet our minds, put ourselves in the presence of God. You know, we spend so much time running here, running there, doing this, doing that. How often do I just stop and say, where am I going? The good news about the good news is that your shepherd wants to lead you. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. A good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for pay and has no concern for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. And I know mine, and mine know me, just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father. And I will lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that do not belong to this fold. These also I must leave, and they will hear my voice, and there will be one flock, one shepherd. This is why the Father loves me, because I lay down my life in order to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own. I have power to lay it down and power to take it up again. This command I have received from my Father, the Gospel of the Lord. Wow, what a gospel it is. This is a deep pool, my friends. You hang out, we'll be right back, and we're going to talk about this gospel and a few other things along the way here as we consider God's Word and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living with Father Chapin. It is such a pleasure to be able to come into your home each and every week and share the good news, but it's a bit expensive. So I would ask you to consider grabbing a piece of paper and a pencil, and at the next break, I'm going to share with you some details how you can become a partner with Daily Living. And together, we can take the good news to a lost world. What do you say we get back to the show? Welcome back to Daily Living. Today we find ourselves in the 10th chapter of the Gospel of John. 
Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And that is what he said. Not a way, but the way. Which seems to fly in the face of inclusivity, which is something that our world places a very high premium on. Inclusivity. This idea that many paths lead to the same God. It is a theology that our world embraces because a people who believe in everything are a people who believe in nothing. But my friends, hear me when I say that Jesus is the way, and his way leads through the cross. Something that he proves in the Garden of Gethsemane, otherwise the cup would have been passed, but it wasn't. And when it wasn't, and his prayers were met with silence, out of that silence came the greatest prayer of all. Not my will, Lord, but thy will be done. So let's talk about our gospel today. Jesus is speaking with the religious leadership of Israel, and they are not fans. They do not like him. He flaunts Mosaic law. He seems to have zero respect for the elders and the traditions. And frankly, he's making them look bad, and, and, and they hate him. And, and so bad, they, they want to kill him, despite the miracles, which they have written off as works of the devil. Jesus, time and time again, gets in their face and points out the hypocrisy, and how they had taken the word that had come through the prophets and twisted it, how they had taken the Ten Commandments and blown them up into 614 laws, and then laid that burden on the people. And we see Jesus call them out on this when he says, they tie up heavy burdens, hard to bear, lay them on people's shoulders, but they themselves are not willing to move a finger to help. And there's a real lesson here for us. This is pointing out the ugly side of religion, this, this idea that somehow we can be righteous in and of ourselves, we can, we can earn our way to heaven, which of course is ridiculous. Because as the scriptures point out many times, no one is righteous. Not one. Yet this attitude that I can somehow earn my stairway to heaven continues to this day. But let's move on. When Jesus says, I say to you, whoever does not enter the sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere, is a thief and a robber. They know who he's talking about. And they know that he's talking about them. I'm talking about the religious leadership. And, and they hate him for it. Jesus said, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. Now, this is the fourth I am statement that we find in the gospel of John, and, and, and could possibly be the most beloved of the seven, I am the good shepherd. Once again, notice not a good shepherd, but the good shepherd, the God shepherd. And I love that image, the shepherd. It's fitting. Jesus is our good shepherd, and he is the way, the truth, and the life. And no one comes to the Father except through him which, as I said, might at first glance not seem very inclusive, but then again, it's super inclusive because he calls all his children. But clearly, not all roads lead to the same God. I'm the good shepherd. I'm the truth, the way, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Now, of course, the religious leadership, they were having none of this. They rejected Jesus, 
and it is a rejection that continues to this day. What gives him the right to say that? Well, let me tell you. Let, let me tell you what gives Jesus the right to say this. The tomb is empty. He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. That is what has given him the right to say that. And what is he speaking? Well, he's speaking truth. And not just truth, but absolute truth. And absolute truth is often uncomfortable truth. It's like a pit bull on a chain. And of course, we live in a world where nobody wants to hear absolute truth. We don't want to hear it. Relative truth, oh, that's okay. We can deal with that. Opinions, no problem. Just as long as they don't offend anybody. I mean, we are taught in our world today to be very careful not to offend anybody. Jesus was a lot of things, but careful wasn't one of them because he spoke absolute truth and it has an edge. It's sharp. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is absolute truth and they killed him for it. But in the end, the truth prevails. Why? Because the tomb is empty. He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. You hang out. We'll be right back. And we will continue to talk all about this gospel and how we might be able to apply it into our daily living. Hi, this is Father Chapin, host of Daily Living. If you feel like you're being fed by this ministry, I would ask you to prayerfully consider a partnership with Daily Living and what we're trying to do here. A monthly gift of any amount that you feel comfortable with and I will send you a monthly newsletter and if you provide an email address, a script of the show prior to its broadcast. Just write a check to Daily Living, P.O. Box 339, Nitro, West Virginia, 25143. You can also go on the website at mydailyliving.com to give through PayPal and together we can shine the light of the good news in a whole lot of dark places. What do you say we get back to the show? Welcome back to Daily Living. I am the Good Shepherd, a hired man who is not a shepherd and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. My friends, the wolf is Satan. He catches some, he scatters others. Has he caught you today? Some might ask, well, hey, God, why, did, why didn't you just kill the wolf? Seems like a reasonable question. But the reason God doesn't kill the wolf is because the wolf is choice. And without choice, free will is impossible. And God loves you so much that he has given you the choice and free will to not love him back. I am the good shepherd. I know mine and mine know me. And I love that. The Greek word here for to know is genosko. And it's much more than just knowing somebody. It's a much deeper word. It suggests uh, an intimacy. It, it suggests a knowing everything about somebody. Knowing their joys, knowing their fears, like you would know your child or your husband or your wife. I mean, you think about that. God loves you so much. He knows you by name. He knows you intimately, everything about you. But then there's the flip side of that. Depart from me, you evildoer. I never knew you. So it's kind of an either-or situation. He either knows you as a sheep, or he, he does not know you as a goat. So how do we know Jesus? Because, of course, we want to be on the sheep team, right? Who is Jesus? And who is he to us? Well, let me start by simply making the point. If I were to ask a room full of people 
What animal would best describe you, represent your personality? I imagine I'd hear all kinds of things, like maybe a lion, I'm a lion, or I'm an eagle, or I'm a wild stallion. Probably a lot of things, but you know what I'm probably never going to hear, ever? I'm a sheep. <laughs> probably wouldn't hear that. In fact, sheeple is a derogatory term for people that just blindly follow anything. We don't, we don't want to be a sheep. Sheep, sheep are stupid. Sheep, sheep can't take care of themselves. They're helpless. They need constant attention. Because left alone, they, they just go to pieces. A pig, on the other hand, I mean, if you let, if you let a pig out into the wild, it, it can survive. And through generations, it becomes a wild boar. But if you, if you let a sheep into the wild, it becomes dinner, right? It dies. It will eat a poisonous plant and die, or it'll, it'll fall off a cliff and die, or, you know, a sheep, if it falls on its back, it can't even get up. I mean, sheep are helpless, which is why they make a perfect metaphor for people. Because let's be honest, we're kind of stupid. We are in need of constant attention, and we are in need of being led. But unfortunately, many of us haven't figured that out yet. Even if I walk through the valley of death, I fear no evil, not as a lion, not as an eagle, but as a sheep. Now, speaking of sheep, they do have some intelligence. There's some good qualities. One of the things uh, that's good about a sheep is, is they can recognize their shepherd's voice, which is a very good thing in a world that has so many voices. We are preached to constantly. Again, getting back to that idea that we can make ourselves righteous and, and earn heaven, or, or we can make our soul as, as light as a feather and drift up into to heaven to meet God. You know, it sounds beautiful, but it has nothing to do with Jesus at all. It has nothing to do with Christianity. We do not subscribe to a merit-based theology we cannot save ourselves, which is why we are in need of a good shepherd who is the way, the truth, and the life, who lays himself down for his sheep, which, by the way, is you and me. Because this is the only way we can be saved from ourselves. It's through his cross. Jesus says, a thief comes only to steal, slaughter, and destroy. I come so that they can have life and have it more abundantly. Like I said, we live in a world with many voices. What voice are you listening to today? Somebody with pretty words telling you how you can save yourself from yourself? Somebody that's trying to show you how to have a better, more vibrant, and abundant life? These are false prophets. Jesus says, I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. Now, it's interesting. The word life here, the Greek word that's used, is not bios, which is what you would normally use. Bios, which means physical life. But it's not bios. It's zoa which speaks much more to the quality of life. It's a life that we all want to have. It's a life that we want to live. It's a life of peace. It's a life with a promised destination. And that promised destination is eternal life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. Oh, how we push back on that. How many of us say, well, no, I'm a lion, you know, I, I'm a wild stallion, I, I got this. Yet as we look over our lives 
and give it an honest assessment, how's that working out for you, <laughs> really? I'm reminded of one of my favorite movies of all time. I, I love it. It's been around for a long time. It's called The Shawshank Redemption. It's a great movie. And there's a lot of themes in there, a lot of religious themes. It's, but it's, it's about a prison, and, and, and there's a scene that's played by Morgan Freeman. And who doesn't love that guy? He's a great actor. And you know, Morgan Freeman is playing this character, and his name is Red. And, and so Red is called in front of the parole board, and they ask him, are you sorry for the crime that you did? And he said, there's not a day that goes by that I don't feel regret. Not because I'm here or because you think I should be here, but when I look back at the way I was then, a young, stupid kid who committed that terrible crime, I want to talk to him. I want to try to talk some sense into him, you know? Tell him the way things are. But I can't, because that kid's long gone, and this old man is all that's left. Wow. Let me ask you this question. If you were to talk to your younger self today, what would you say? Better yet, do you think you'd listen? My friends, we have all had occasions where we have wandered far from our good shepherd. Hear me when I say Christ died for those occasions. How do you know your love? Well, the greater the sacrifice, the greater the love. Or as Paul puts so well, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for the righteous person, Though for a good person, one might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Now, let me ask you this. How does that have anything to do with what you've done or haven't done? How does that have anything to do with how righteous you are or how unrighteous you are? He died while we were still sinners. Why is Jesus our good shepherd? Well, I can give you four reasons. Number one, he died for his sheep. And he died for us while we were still sinners. Number two, he knows us intimately by name. In fact, he knows us better than we know ourselves. Number three, he gathers his sheep from a world full of wolves and cares for us one day at a time if we are willing to turn the care of our lives over to him. And finally, number four, and this is the greatest reason, the tomb is empty. He is risen. Alleluia, alleluia. He is our good shepherd because he defeated death. And he makes it very clear in John 14, in my father's house, there are many dwelling places. And I will come back for you so that where I am, you also may be. Your shepherd is calling for you today. Do you hear his voice? Are you listening to his voice? Or are you listening to the voices of fear? The voices of greed? The voices of lust? Let us draw closer to our good shepherd. Let us dial into that quiet voice that is trying to lead us through this chaos we call life. Let us take the time to spend time with him in his word, to hear his word preached, and most importantly, just talk to him. Let us, let us enter into prayer. Are we part of his flock? Or have we been scattered? Who are we following today? Are you a lost sheep? Does it sometimes feel that way? Never forget, there will be more joy in heaven 
over just one repentant sinner the 99 and no need of repentance. Although, to tell you the truth, I'm still trying to figure out who those 99 are. My friends, we all stand before the cross. Your good shepherd is calling for you. Do you hear his voice? Are you listening to that voice? Or do you feel lost? Never forget, one cannot be found until they first realize they are in fact lost. And if you're standing there with your arms folded, rejecting your shepherd because you're a lion and you got it all figured out, well, my friend, you're lost and you don't even know it. Or maybe you do. If so, you've been scattered. Stop trying to save yourself. Our good shepherd will bring you back. He is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. No one comes to the Father except through him. And he has come to gather you today. You know, every day in this country, somebody does something nice for somebody else. Today, why don't you let that somebody be you? Because the best vitamin for a Christian is be one. This is Daily Living. I'm Father Chapin. And remember, if you're looking for a new life, God accepts trade-ins. Hope you can come back next week and we'll do it again. Until then, I hope you let God live in your life. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. <laughs>